What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. Today's video was actually supposed to be another photo vlog and we actually have the first part of it filmed but Christina hasn't been feeling that great the last few days so we didn't get to go out and do the second part of it. But whenever she's back to 100% we will go out, get that bit filmed and then the next video up on the channel will be another photo vlog. The topic I want to just briefly touch on today is something that I've used quite a bit in our photo vlogs and I think it's something that a lot of you guys would find very useful if you don't already use it. Like we've said before here in videos, we don't like to dive into the set and side of photography too much because to be honest, we get a bit bored listening to it and we're sure that you guys do too, but whenever we use something that helps us get better photos, we like to pass it on. So that's why today I'm gonna to touch on exposure bracketing. So I'm just briefly gonna run through what it is, when you might want to use it, and how to set it up on your Fuji X-T30, and I assume it's very similar on other Fuji cameras as well. So essentially what exposure bracketing is, is taking multiple exposures of the same scene, normally with the end goal of getting a bigger dynamic range with the final photo. Yeah. So when would you want to use it? For example, in this photo, which was actually took in the first segment of the photo vlog I said we recorded at the start of the video, we were on the side of the mountain, it was a few hours before sunset and it was still really bright. We were getting a lot of light coming from the left hand side over the hill, which was hitting the mountain on the right hand side quite harshly and the sky was really bright. And then we have a lot of shadows on kind of the left portion of the frame. So I decided to exposure bracket for this one, which meant that I would have one normally exposed image one overexposed image and one underexposed image. And that meant whenever I brought them in and merged them together in Lightroom, I was left with a photo with a lot of detail in the shadows and nothing overexposed in the sky. And I think the final photo turned out pretty nicely. And some of you might ask why I didn't just take one photo where I exposed for the sky and just brought up the shadows in Lightroom. And sometimes that might work fine, but the shadows were really harsh that day. And if I had just brought the shadows right up to 100 in Lightroom, I would have had a lot more noise in that image than the way I did it where I combined three because I had a lot more detail captured in the shadows from the image that was overexposed, if that makes sense. Just something I find really useful. I think it was the right choice in that scenario. And it really doesn't take any more time when you're shooting it's, it, it doesn't take any more time at all. And then when it comes to editing, what I did in Lightroom was just highlight the three photos, click photo merge, HDR photo merge, and then you wait a few minutes for Lightroom to do its thing. And that's pretty much it. Just be careful if there is any moving subjects in your photo. For example, I did another version of this shot where there was a car passing through it. And because the photos are took like a split second apart, the car is technically like in three different spots. So whenever Lightroom goes to merge it, it tries to fix that and it, it can kind of mess things up a little bit. So just be careful if there's moving subjects, the exposure bragging might not work and you might have to crop out whatever it was that was moving if possible. I mean, you might have to clone out or use the healing brush or whatever way, content aware fill, whatever it is that you want to do in Photoshop to remove that moving object if, if Lightroom does mess it up. You can also merge the photos together by yourself in Lightroom by using masks and stuff if you want to be really precise with it. But Lightroom did a good job for what I wanted to do, so I didn't need to. And really the only other time I would use exposure bracketing is if I'm taking a photo of something and I'm not quite sure exactly how to expose it. For example, when we were out taking photos in the snow, you kind of want to overexpose a little bit when you're in the snow. And sometimes it can be a little bit hard. You've got the zebras going on, you kind of want to make sure that you're not blowing anything out. Um, so I would turn on the exposure bracketing. So I just have a little bit of a choice when it comes to Lightroom and I realize I overexposed that a little bit. Um, I've kind of got the back up where the camera underexposed one and I might use it instead. It also can be kind of useful in like a backlighting scenario or if you're shooting like into the sun, for example, it can be hard to get the exposure spot on with one shot. So if you flick your exposure bracketing on, you can get multiple exposures and then you can decide whether to combine them or just pick one. And yeah, it, it just makes sense to do. Because unfortunately we can't always nail the exposure perfectly in camera, or at least I can't anyway. I've brought photos into Lightroom before and just realized that there's a part of that sky I just can't bring the detail back in or the shadows are just too noisy when I raise the shadows in Lightroom. But if you're someone who just nails your exposure in all scenarios, then maybe you don't need exposure bragging. But I know there's been many times when I am glad I turned it on. 
old. Okay, so on the Fuji X-T30, and I'm assuming most other Fujis, it actually is very easy to set up exposure bracketing. Okay, so to set up exposure bracketing, what we're gonna do is go into the menu, go down to the little camera icon, and go across to drive setting. And you then have two different bracketing options. I'm just gonna pick number one, because that makes sense. And whenever we're in here, there is a few different options. What you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that bracket select at the top is auto exposure bracket. And then after that, just go to AE bracket and frame slash step setting. So the frames is the amount of exposures that the camera's gonna take every time you take one photo. I have it set to three, which means it will take one photo at the normal exposure, one overexposed and one underexposed. And the other setting I have set to one step, which is essentially one stop which means I'll have one stop overexposed and one stop underexposed. This is entirely up to you and the circumstances that you're shooting in and just how much of a difference in exposure that you want those other two shots to be. And then the next setting, we just want to make sure that that is set to continuous. And then the sequence setting at the bottom is just the order in which it takes the shot. This one doesn't particularly matter, I don't believe. It's just the order in which it takes the photos. The other settings in here, for example, the ISO bracket only comes into play if the top option is selected to ISO bracket. It's currently auto exposure bracket, but if I picked ISO bracket, it would change at the top and then the ISO setting would come into play. Hopefully that makes sense. But I currently have it set to auto exposure bracket, which will then use the settings that we just set. So once you've changed those settings around, like I just showed you, that's pretty much it. Um, you can go out and whenever you feel the need to expose your bracket, you can just flick the little dial on the top of your camera to BKT1, and it will then use the settings that we just put in. So you could possibly set up bracketing one and bracketing two for different scenarios, and then when you're out shooting, you just flick the little dial at the top to whatever one that it is you want to use. There is one downside to exposure bracketing. If you have it turned on and you take a photo, obviously you're taking more than one photo. So you're gonna fill up your memory card pretty quick. And if you have a small memory card, maybe not the best idea to always keep exposure bracketing on, especially if you're shooting RAWs because you're gonna fill that thing up pretty fast. But besides that, I do find it very useful and I do use it all the time. So hopefully it's helpful to you guys too if you don't already use it. But anyway, less blabbering on about settings. Like we said, we don't like to talk about the specific settings and stuff too much because it gets boring. But when it's something like this that we use all the time and it helps us get the shots that we get, we like to pass it on to you guys and yeah, hopefully you find it helpful. That's pretty much it for this one. Like I said at the start, the photo vlog will be coming next. Hopefully Christina will be back to your good old self. Ooh. That was better, whatever that was be able to go out and record that one and get it up pretty soon. If you found this one helpful, maybe give it a thumbs up. We would appreciate it because we are a small channel and maybe consider subscribing too if you like the content. But for now, I'm probably gonna go and get myself a good old cup of tea. So yeah, as we always say, take it easy. Don't be a stranger.